So I came across this on Twitter recently. Usually Twitter is just a cesspool of garbage, but every now and again you find a little nugget of something interesting. Um, this is one of those nuggets which is interesting and also very disappointing at the same time. So essentially, the Mexican government has made it illegal for you to be able to modify the software or the hardware of your electronic devices. Um, we have this tweet right here, it's in Spanish, so I don't know exactly what it means. I Google translated it earlier, but essentially, um, it was almost a unanimous vote. So you had 367 of, I guess, Mexico's Congress or whatever exactly government structure they have down there that voted in favor of this digital rights restriction uh, zero that were against it and one person that just abstained uh, from voting it. And then there's this little infograph down here of some of the things that could get you thrown in a Mexican jail if you do them for up to 10 years. So if you evade or break a software or hardware protection for study or investigation purposes. So information security research is now illegal. In Mexico, unless you go through, you know, probably some expensive government licensing crap to be able to investigate it. So there goes your information security, Mexico. Uh, if you modify the hardware of your computer or install non OEM operating systems. So Linux is now illegal in Mexico unless you buy, um, you know, one of these System 76 computers or one of the very few pieces of hardware that actually come pre installed with Linux. And even then, you're not going to really get much choice in the distribution that you get to pick because when I've looked into computers that come pre installed with Linux, it's usually not something like Gentoo or Arch Linux, it's generally Ubuntu or Debian, you know, one of those kind of just works distros. Um, if you use or manufacture generic supplies for printers or coffee makers, so you can't use uh, off-brand ink, right? You got to buy the super expensive marked up printer ink. Um, and it is marked up, by the way. I've, I've worked for stores in the past where I've seen how much the store is able to purchase the printer ink for and then how much they sell it for, where it's kind of a, a direct purchase or... Um, like a buy in bulk type deal. And it's it's marked up ridiculously. And then obviously the manufacturing of this printer ink isn't super expensive. It's in a lot of cases, it's over a thousand percent markup that you pay for printer ink. And then if you repair your own devices by your own means or with independent technicians. So what this means is that if you break your iPhone or if you break your Android phone. So if you break your Android phone, you're pretty much screwed because there's not even repair centers that you can go to which are like legitimate Samsung or Google or whichever manufacturer repair center to get your phone fixed. They don't exist. They don't exist in the way that Apple has an Apple store where you can drop off your iPhone and get it fixed same day. So if you break your Android phone, you're screwed. You're going to be without a phone for several days. You have to ship it off to Korea in the case of Samsung to have them fix it. And then they ship it back to you. So you're going to be without it for weeks. Uh, or if you have an Apple phone, you have to actually go to the Genius Bar or go to, um, well, I don't think they really have geek squads in Mexico or at least not Apple certified geek squads, but you have to go through some nonsense to get your phone fixed. And I have firsthand experience with this Apple certified nonsense because I actually worked at an Apple certified uh, geek squad repair center. And essentially all that Apple certification means is there is a list of things which I cannot do to fix your phone. It's like I have this whole array of knowledge and tools that I could use to fix your phone, to do repairs in which Apple wants me to charge you for a whole phone replacement where it's like, oh no, really, I could just do this. But because this one thing goes outside of the scope of what Apple taught me, it's against the rules, so I can't do it, and I can't actually you know, fix your phone for a lower price or do it in a way that is more convenient for you. Um, this is the 
uh, sort of not not official article, but this is just one of the better articles that I found that covers everything here. So it tells you installing a custom ROM, downloading using software that does not come from the same provider. So also uh, F Droid and sideloading APKs. That's also illegal now. Uh, which is now expressly prohibited by federal copyright law. The digital locks are TPMs using hardware manufacturers and developers for their copyrights are protected. In this way, users cannot make a copy of the information that the systems contain, nor can they access the software code. The problem is that breaking locks is part of the process to repair a computer, update a device that has been discontinued by the manufacturer, or prevent a device from collecting user information. A uh, free trade agreement between Mexico, United States, and Canada enters into force on July 1st as a priority that con of Congress that before it happened, a series of law were harmonized, among which the federal law on copyright, although civil organizations such as the, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I'll link this article below so that you guys can, uh, can read this yourself. Um, so there's only a few situations in which these digital locks can be broken. So when the purpose is interoperability, so basically your system is just so outdated that you need to migrate to another device. Um, if you want to prevent minors from accessing porn or some type of inappropriate content, that's okay. Uh, when the purpose is to test, investigate, or correct the security of a computer, computer systems, or network, that sounds a little bit like it's in disagreement with this. So again, I think most likely if you're a security research that's reverse engineering software, uh, trying to find security flaws in it or something like that, you're probably going to have to do this strictly under the guise of your university or you're going to have to be in some sort of agreement with the Mexican government in order for you to actually do this research, which again is, first of all, it's just an unnecessary hurdle, right? Like it's it's probably gonna cost you money. It's obviously going to cost you a lot of time because everything with the government is a waste of time or ends up taking more time than it should actually take. Uh, so again, there's less research that's going to be done. There's less research that's going to come out to find security flaws like what we found with Zoom or remote code execution exploits that exist on iOS and Android, those are not going to be found by Mexican security researchers anymore. They're going to be found by people in other countries that don't have to deal with these nonsense restrictions and can just go ahead and do their work. Uh, when a person wants their device to stop collecting personal information, uh, so, okay, I guess that's good. You can actually turn off your GPS or something. Although, to be honest, there's no way to actually know that it's turned off if you're running a closed source OS. Uh, when an authorized person must do it to protect national security, sure. So, of course, laws don't actually apply to the government. Uh, when an investigator must analyze flaws in a technology as long as he has obtained it legally. So here we go. This is where, again, you're going to have to get a license to do any type of security research. Uh, when a nonprofit person adapts a system to other languages or couples it to be accessible to people with some type of disability. So, okay, I guess you can do it if you're a nonprofit. So when I first saw this, I tried to think is there any legitimate reason why the Mexican government would try to do this? And, you know, there's only one. There's only one thing I could come up with to try to play devil's advocate for the Mexican government, which is that maybe they're trying to implement this so that they can just backdoor everybody's phone everybody's PC, you know, everybody's printer, whatever technology, so that they can try to catch criminal activity. Because in Mexico, in case you didn't know, there's a lot of cartel activity that goes on. There's a lot of drug smuggling. There's a lot of human trafficking, uh, lots of murder, lots of bad stuff, right? Not throughout all of Mexico. Like there's obviously some parts of it that are safe and good, uh, but there's also a lot of parts of it that are really bad. And this doesn't even really make sense because here's the thing. These guys are already criminals, right? These guys who are in cartels are already doing heinous illegal activity. They're already kidnapping entire families, you know, raping the young girls or selling them into slavery of some kind, or they just go ahead and dismember the entire family, chop them up into pieces, and then leave them on the neighbor's lawn. 
somebody who's doing this, and this is already illegal in Mexico. Like this is already something that's going to get you thrown in jail for life uh, or possibly give you the death penalty if Mexico has the death penalty. So obviously criminals who are doing criminal activity are not going to stop doing a criminal activity because the legislators told them not to. So do you really think that these cartel guys don't have an IT person that works for them? Do you really think that they don't have somebody who can modify the software on their computers or verify that there's no type of tracking going on within them? You're crazy if you think they don't have that. These are multi-billion dollar enterprises, the cartels that I'm talking about. They can afford all of that, all right? If you've ever seen, uh, I mean, obviously this isn't for the faint of heart, but if you've ever seen like cartel executions, a lot of them are professionally shot on professional DSLR cameras, all right? Like these guys, they're, this isn't going to stop them. This isn't going to actually track anybody or get anybody except for maybe the most low-life criminals. And they're not going to snitch out the cartel members because they know their whole family is going to get killed if they do that. So the devil's advocate doesn't even really play up. Here's the real reason. Here's the reason why I think that they're doing it. They probably got bought. The Mexican government is very corrupt. A lot of the governments in Central and South America are very corrupt. And you have essentially these cyber cartels, which would be Microsoft and Apple, because that is who this benefits. This doesn't benefit the people in Mexico. This doesn't benefit uh, the police, obviously, because like I just said, any type of back doors that you try to put on a criminal's phone or a criminal's computer, they're going to be able to circumvent that. They're going to be able to get rid of that. I mean, any good criminal isn't even carrying their phone around with them all the time anyway because they know about GPS tracking, okay? They've known about this for decades now. So the only people this benefits are Apple and Microsoft. I wouldn't be surprised if these 367 people who voted in favor of this law were paid off by Apple and Microsoft and other digital cartels, if you want to call them that, uh, to pass this law. So it's ridiculous. Uh, Mexico really needs to get a right to repair because this is this doesn't benefit its citizens at all. This is and and also this isn't good for tourism. Right, like I run a modified OS on all of my computers, right? All of my phones have modified OSs. They all have modified APKs. Uh, you know, my computers all run Linux. So now I, as an American, feel like I can't be a tourist in Mexico because if some random cop walks in by and sees that I'm using Gentoo on my laptop, they're going to say, oh, okay, now you're going to jail for 10 years. And that's not worth me taking a trip to Mexico. So you're shooting yourself in the foot. You're shooting all your citizens in the foot. You need to repeal this law because it's obvious what's going on here. And I don't think the Mexican people are going to stand for it.